usual, what I first do when I'm doing a new layer is get everything wet. Okay, so that's what I'm doing here. I don't know if you can see, but I love how this granulated here. That was just using ivory black, straight ivory black. And, um, paintbrush seems to have like a bunch of granular paint in it because it's like making a mess here. So, just getting this really wet. Super wet. So, this first layer, you always want your first layer when you're painting animals to be really, really soft, usually, unless you're going through for just like a specific style look, which I am not. I'm just trying to make this look like a realistic kitty. So, kitties are soft, so wet and wet is your best friend when you're trying to make something look um, realistic and soft. So, I'm using wet and wet technique here, pretty much straight, and then I'm going to put in the oranges. This is a calico kitty. So, um, lots of soft little orange areas. And I know this is bleeding, but I'll come back and um, all this is going to have a lot of um, black on top of it. So, it's okay if it's bleeding like this a little bit. This actually isn't wet enough. As you can see, it's not bleeding enough, so I'm going to add some more water, adding more water. I want this really soft. Okay, this is, edge isn't soft enough yet, so adding water there. Okay, and he's got some cute little orange spots right over here. Mm, got some orange in his ear, got some orange on the tip of his ear. The more you can get done during this wet on wet first phase, the better. So I'm trying to work as fast as I possibly can because I would like to go back in with my black, which I'm going to do now. I think I got all the. I'm going to get some really thick black paint on my brush. So I am really, really scrubbing, 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 scrubbing to get my paintbrush full of thick black paint so I can work wet on wet and I'm gonna go in this is actually just the right consistency it's almost too dry so I'm trying to work really fast here See, some of this is already too dry, but I can still get a lot done. This will look best wet on wet through here. This is all dry over here. I forgot to wet this area. That's okay. I'll just try to stay away from it. This is all black.
lot more black. This area is really dark on the actual kitty. Now I want this orange to really stay here. So I'm going to go back in with some orange real fast where this black is kind of making the moves on the orange or the black. I don't want that. I want this to stay orange over here. So I'm going to go back in, tell this orange what's up, leave my orange alone black. is really staying nice and soft. I'm happy with how this is looking so far. Knock on wood right. Okay, this is getting too dry over here, so let's see if I can cheat a little bit. It's getting too dry. some dark orange here. Make sure that orange stays orange. Now a little trick is, see this? So I'm continuing to work on this Calico Kitty and I have used Ivory Black and Naphthol Red and Transparent Yellow to make the orange. I mix them together. In the cooler areas I'll probably use some Burnt Sienna in case I don't mention. The first thing I do is get the eyes wet. And just to keep all the colors matchy-matchy, I'm going to use the same yellow, but now I'll be using yellow and green in these kitties' eyes. I've got my mask in there to preserve the little splash of uh, light, the little white glint in the eyes, so use mask for that. This is mask. And I just, um, I've done videos on how to use masking, how to protect your brushes from getting messed up so you might want to do a search on my YouTube channel for that one. I'm just filling in this eye and I'll just do one at a time. And then I put in the lightest color which is going to be transparent yellow. Okay, so I'm going to drop that in. Probably can't see it much, but it's very bright yellow. And then I'm going to drop in some light green number one. I'm pretty sure that's a Daniel Smith brand green that I prefer. Um, it's very bright and it'll probably need to be toned down a little. And I'm going to now take and add a little bit of a blue and I blew it up a little. It's a little too blue there. I just don't want it to be so neon, quite so neon um, yellow here. So it's just a hint of yellow in this cat's eyes. So I want to stay true to that. This is a commission so I do want to keep it as realistic as I possibly can. Okay, so that's that eye. And then later when it dries I'll go back in and draw in the pupil. I'll paint in the pupil anyway. Okay, I'm going to get this eye wet. Scoshy scosh of some yellow to yellow it up. I already had some green in my brush that time when I was getting the eye wet, so that's fine. 
Um, I'll put some green on top of that. Just kind of let it sit. Okay, so that's the eye. While I'm getting stuff done like this, I might as well go ahead and put in the little pink nose. So I'm just going to carefully get this wet and pick up some nice naphthol red. It doesn't take much because this is just a light pink nose. And this area over here is really light and it's almost an orangey. I'm gonna I'm gonna put in a skosh 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 of yellow right there. And then down here it's a darker pink. So I'm gonna add some detail there. And then I'll go back in when that dries and put in more detail. I'm gonna go over here and get all this wet and put in his little black spot over here. He's got a black... You know what, actually I should be a good little artist and go from light to dark. That's how we work in watercolor if we're doing it the right way and of course this cat has a white, lots of white in his coat. My goodness, got some cat hair in here. That's the beauty of watercolor. You can just wipe that little cat hair away. <laughs> um, so I'm going to put in some shadows actually and I think I'll use some cobalt blue. I ran out of my ultramarine. Normally I think I would use ultramarine here, but I don't have any. And in the actual picture this is a lot grayer, so I'm going to add some black there. And that's just going to give a little bit of a shadow so that we have some dimension to Kitty's body. The light source is looks like the, here's the shadow of his face so it's coming in this way so this is kind of in shadow and then this is protruding so this is lighter I'm just getting this wet again and putting in some shadows to make this his leg a little round so the bottom is usually the part that has the shadow and then over here, because the light sources come from here, it's in a warm light, I'm going to put some warm light over here. So I'm going to get this wet to get it ready for that. And go in with a little bit of transparent yellow and a tiny little, tiny little touch of naphthol red just to orange it up. Because over here, he's got a pretty orange shadow because the color of the light hitting him must have been more warm. And then it quickly goes from warm to cool. And then over here, this shadow is completely almost blue in the picture. So I'm just going to carry that on over into there. And... There we go. It's got a really dark shadow right here. I feel like that's almost orange. So I'll put that in. Okay. Looking good, right? All right. Now this is still wet. I'm just going to go ahead and put in this little dark spot here. I might have to go back later and... It's got a black spot. I love keeping it soft still in these early stages. I might go back in and put some fur detail in later. There we go. Voila. 
black spot. I'm going to keep working into this though because my paper is really wet so even if you have a ton of paint on your brush it's going to come out too light and you just keep adding, adding, adding until you get it dark enough and it's kind of practice makes perfect, you know. Um, you'll learn as you do more and more watercolor how much paint you need to add when it's wet so when it dries it looks dark enough because it'll dry a lot lighter than what it looks right now. Okay, and let's see, is that I? I always use the back of my hand somehow. The nerves on the back of my hand are more sensitive and I can feel the moisture more. And it feels like this eye is dry. So what that means is I can go in here with the clean brush. I'm going to wet all this. So I'm going to darken this little black spot over here. Because his little, this side of his face is a lot darker. Then my paint dry. So load my brush up a lot. I really want to retain this cool edge, so I'm going to kind of try to stay away from that. It granulated in a really cool way, so I'm try to stay away from that and just get this nice and dark. Pretty dark. Okay, that looks a lot better. For these commissions, they gotta look right. And there's a lot more pressure when you're painting commissions. It might make you might make more money with commissions, but. I don't know. Got to decide, is it worth the pressure? Because <laughs> it's a lot of pressure to get kitty right. Whereas if you're just painting for yourself, it's just like, oh, well, well, it doesn't look just like the picture. No one else will know, so who cares? But when you're painting a commission, people can be picky, picky, picky. And then you can go ahead and put in the iris, and then it gives the really brings a cat to life. It's a fun stage in the painting because it kind of comes alive all of a sudden. It's kind of fun. And if you can, it's helpful to be able to connect the black of the iris to some black in the edge of the eye so it's not just floating there all weird and cut out looking. Luckily this cat has a lot of what we'll call eyeliner, so that's actually good. Connect this black. Okay, I might go back to that. I'm not sure if I'm happy with that, but okay, I'm going to get this wet again so it all flows in together. Add some nice thick black to my brush and drop it in to the puddle I created. Such cute little eyebrows this one has. <laughs> okay. Aw, doesn't that look cute? Just so cute. Let me get the pupils in somehow that brings it alive. I'm gonna widen this pupil a little, make it more round. And there we go. So fun, right? Okay, so um, I didn't video the last couple of segments of what I did with this painting, but I was just basically putting in some more details. I put in some um, more colors in the eyes to give them some depth. 
So now they're not just that flat green. So, you know, I just did my typical wet everything and then um, paint in the eyes. And now I'm just kind of trying to scrub edges and soften places um, that have hard edges that I want to have soft edges. I also put in this background. The owner said that um, they wanted a taupe background, which I think that works pretty well. And they wanted, I guess he has this, this cat has a yellow blanket he really loves. So um, that's why we have a yellow floor looking thing here. <laughs> um, that's why we have a yellow floor looking thing. This is actually like a rug, I guess, this cat likes. So that has sentimental value to the owner. So I just went ahead and put that in as requested and just softening up edges. It's so amazing to me how softening up edges really can really change the whole feel of a painting so quickly. It really helps a lot, I think. To scrub edges, I'm a big edge scrubber. So that's what I'm doing here. Just scrubbing, 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 and then I'm going to put in these last little details, getting the background wet again because I want it to be wet. Not too wet for this part because it's just a little, I'm putting in a little tip of a tail here. I'm just going to put in a little tip of a tail here. I'm just going to put a little tip of the tail in here, like so. And I blotted my paper, and you can see how fast already the it's dried. But that's fine. I just need to get a little hint of a tail back in here. So that's that. I think I'm kind of at the point where I like to stop and ask the owner what they think. So, oops. I think I'm going to do that.